Welcome to module four, a module on bonds. So bonds are a very common financial instrument and they will be in every corporate finance course. And the reason is, well, one, they're important to finance, but two, the reason you'll learn about them fairly early in your finance course is because the cash flows related to bonds are very predictable. And we know the value of pretty much anything value of a bond is the present value of the future cash flows. And so we have lots of work we can do with bond calculations. And the best way to learn, I think anything in finance, anything with numbers is to do examples. So I'll prepared, I've prepared a fairly straightforward example of a bond and we'll just talk about the cash flows and then we'll, we'll solve this example. And I think it'll be illustrative of a lot of other examples that we'll do in my video series here, but also in your, your class, I imagine this will relatively match up with what you're learning. There might be some differences in jargon and lingo, but you'll see the calculations will be fairly similar. Uh, I'm thinking of buying a two year thousand dollar bond. Now, most bonds will be of longer length than this that you'll be uh, tackling in your class, but two years makes it easy to explain thousand dollar bond with a coupon rate of 4% and a yield to maturity of 5%. The bond makes semi-annual payments. How much will I pay today? What's the price of the bond? Okay. So present value of future cash flows. And we got to think, what are the cash flows related to the bond? And maybe a big step back. What is a bond? A bond is an investor is loaning money to a company or to a government and they want to get paid back with interest. That's essentially it. It's a loan between the investor and the org organization. So you're the investor, you're giving somebody a thousand dollars, or you're thinking of giving somebody a thousand dollars today, and they're going to pay you back with interest. But the cash flows related to the bond are kind of funny. They're almost always semi annual. So semi annual means every six months. Uh, and so you loan them the thousand dollars. They don't let the interest clock tick for the two years and then pay you back everything. Every six months ago, how much interest is ticked up? Here's your interest. Six months more. How much interest is ticked up? Here's your interest. And they write you a check every six months. So that's part of the return on a bond. And that makes bond math a little complicated because we don't just get them a bunch of money at the start and they give us a bunch of money at the end. We give them a bunch of money at the start. Then every six months, they give us a little bit of money. And at the end, they pay us back the thousand and they give us a little interest at the end too. So there's multiple cash flow streams. And so it's a perfect finance problem. It really is. It's all the time value of money stuff we learned last chapter just comes into play for this very real financial instrument. So um, let's, I, I find this stuff is helpful to draw a timeline or a number line here. So we've got two years, right? This bond is a two year bond. So we got time zero. That's the day we uh, lend them the money or write the check, buy the bond, essentially. We got year one and we got year two. But we need to remember because bonds, everything's semi-annual, we're actually interested in semi-annual periods. So we got time zero. And in terms of semi-annual periods, every half year is a period. Time one, time two, time three, and time four, because again, we're not interested in one year at a time. We're actually interested. Everything's six months at a time. So <clears throat> let's do some quick math. We're trying to figure out how much to pay for this bond. And the question is, how much should we give up? And it's based on what we are going to get over time. So let's figure out what we get. Well, we get a payment at time one. Let's see. It's a thousand dollars times 4%. That's a $40 payment, but that would be if it was annual. We're getting it every six months. So it's $20 every six months. So we get a $20 payment six months from now, a $20 payment a year from now, a $20 payment uh, 18 months from now, a year and a half from now, and a $20 payment uh, two years from now. Uh, but you can see if I spend a thousand dollars and I get 20, 40, 60, 80 dollars back, that's nothing. I got to get my thousand dollars back and we do get our thousand dollars back at the end. Now, how do I discount the cash flows? And that's where, so we use the coupon rate to figure out the payment amounts. We use the yield to maturity to figure out the discount rate to, to say, okay, well, it's $20 six months from now. How much is that worth 
today. And again, it's 5%. That's a, an annual interest rate. We got to divide it by two. So it's two and a half percent per six month period per six months. So I got to discount this $20. So how do I discount it? I go 20 divided by actually, let me just go, uh, divided by 1.025 to the power of one, right? One plus the discount rate to the first power. This one's going to be divided by 1.025 to the two squared because it's two periods. I got a cough. There we go. Just had to clear my throat. Um, 1.025 to the third power and this one divide and again these are all divided by divided by 1.025 to the fourth power right but of course you and i know this is just present value of an annuity and so that's what we will do we'll say okay what's that annuity of 20 dollars cash flows the thousand dollars is a lump sum and we'll divide a thousand by 1.025 to the power of four to figure out what a thousand dollars um is worth two years from now four compounding periods from now. So those are the cash flows and we just have to take the present value of those cash flows. That's how bonds work. Now, again, you can imagine if this was a 10 year bond, not a two year bond, this would just, this number line would go on forever. And you'd be like, this doesn't make sense to do it this way. So the way to do it is either with a financial calculator or by formulas. Let's do it first by formulas. So here's a formula for present value of an annuity. That's the $20 every six month piece and present value of a lump sum. That's the thousand dollars at the end. Let's do the lump sum first. So we said it's a thousand dollar lump sum divided by one plus R, which is our yield to maturity rate. 5% per year divided by two, because we're getting everything with a bond is semi-annual. So one plus uh, 0.025 raised the power of the number of periods. Now it's two years, but that's four semi-annual compounding periods. So that's the math. Uh, let me do it. Uh, where's my calculator? There you are. You were hiding away. Uh, 1.025. So that's the denominator raised to the power of four, y to the x four. So it's 1.1. Now to do the math here, you can write the number down. So I can go a thousand divided by 1.1038, but I like keeping it all in my calculator. So the way you do here is you go one over x and I get 0.9 and then you multiply by a thousand. You'll get the same answer it's just a way to keep all the numbers in your calculator. So I get 905.95 as my present value of the thousand. So again, I loan them a thousand. They're paying me $20 interest every six months for two years. And then they'll pay me back the thousand. So what's the thousand worth in two years? It's worth 905 bucks. What's the $20 payment worth? Well, that's the PV of an annuity. It's a $20 payment. The C is the payment equals now this is an awkward formula one minus one over some brilliant mathematician came up with this one plus r so 1.025 to the t to the power of four uh all divided by r oops 0 0.025 Okay, so I'm gonna just figure out what's in the brackets here. So I go 1.025 raised to the power of four, y to the x four. So it's 1.1, We that's a familiar number, it's down there. Uh, then I go one over that, so one over x, I get 0 0.9, then I go one minus that. So I put this in as a negative number plus one so now my numerator is 0 0.094. I'm gonna divide by 0 0.025. So again, this number on top, once I sort of resolve all of that, I'm at 0 0.094, et cetera. 0 0.094 divided by 0 0.025. Again, I'm keeping everything in my calculator, so I don't wanna round. I get 3.76, and then I multiply that by 20 times 20. So it's worth 75.24. And by the way, these numbers are both passing my sniff test. Does this stink? I've said the present value of 20, 40, 60, 80, you know, 
eighty dollars worth of payments. You know, if I discount it, it's not that long of a period. It's worth seventy five dollars in today's dollars, and that sort of smells right to me. You know, if you get some number like two hundred, you go, "There's no way," right? Or if you get a number like twelve, there's no way. So sometimes you get weird numbers. So let's add these together. Uh, my present value of the twenty dollar cash flows again from this bond is seventy five bucks. The present value of the lump sum coming from bonds is nine oh five. 75 plus, where's my mouse? Uh, 905.95 is 981.19, 981.19. So what should I be willing to pay for this bond? This bond is worth 981 bucks in today's dollars. Um, okay, so obviously and i've mentioned this a few times we did it by hand and i would be much quicker if i wasn't explaining it as i went right i could just punch in the numbers it would take me a couple of minutes it is much faster though if i am able to use a financial calculator so let's just sort of think of what goes into our financial calculator so my n is the number of periods of course for my i slash y is the R, right? It's our 2.5%. Uh, uh, it's our, our um, yield to maturity, again, semi-annual, so divide by two. Um, my PMT is, oops, my PV is actually what we're going to solve for. We won't say PV uh, negative 1,000. We're just going to say PV uh, what we solve for. Um, So our PV here is question mark. Our PMT is, uh, what was it, 20 bucks. Our FV is a thousand bucks. And now how much would we give up today? Well, that's our PV. So let's punch these all in. Four goes in as N, 2.5 goes in as IY. PV, we don't know. Uh, PMT is 20. And again, there's money coming to us. $1,000 is our future value. We compute PV and I get 981.19. So how much is this bond worth? It's worth 981 and 19 cents. Okay, there we have it. Uh, we've solved for our bond. Uh, bonds are pretty straightforward, but it, it, it's mathy, right? It's present value of a lump sum combined with present value of an annuity. And they'll often say, okay, well, this is the information we don't know. We're solved for this or we'll solve for that. And it's just a matter of working our way around that math. We'll do tons more examples this chapter. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.